I took a simple piece of drone footage that looked like this, and I turned it into this. Now it takes three things to come up with a really great video. One, you need a strong idea about what it is you want to make. Number two, you need all the things that might help bring that particular idea to life, like your video clips and your audio and your sound effects. And number three is you need some pretty basic skills in your video editing software so that you can accomplish some of these things that you see in your head. Let me walk you through some of the things I did here today to take this simple piece of footage and actually make it tell a story. Now what you're looking at here is the entire finished project that I created out of that simple clip. Now as I said, I started with that one simple piece of drone footage that I actually got from today's sponsor, Storyblocks. Now that footage was a fairly static shot as you can see here. It was just a drone footage flying over the city. Now on the streets below I could see there were some people and some cars driving by, and I actually got the inspiration for this by seeing this piece of footage. I thought, wouldn't it be neat if I could turn this into some sort of police helicopter chase, trying to find a suspect that's driving somewhere through the streets? So the first thing I did was I decided I needed to be able to zoom in on some element inside of this footage, and I decided I wanted it to be that white car right there. Now to do that, I needed to figure out when I wanted it to zoom, how I wanted it to zoom, and then make that footage feel like it was following that car on the street. Anytime you're trying to make any kind of motion on screen, making your video move left or right, up or down, zoom in, zoom out, turn around, flip, any of those things, that's all done by keyframing motion. And as I've always said, keyframes are just like little sticky notes to let the software know what you want the footage to do at any given point in time. So with this piece of footage, what I did was I started way back at the beginning and I started playing and deciding where I wanted that zoom in to happen. So I played a little bit and I said, oh, maybe about here. Now, what I did at that point is I selected the footage in my timeline and I went to the upper right inspector and I clicked on the transform keyframe. And if you notice by expanding the keyframe option, that little triangle at the lower right of your footage, you can see that DaVinci Resolve has added a keyframe right here where the playhead was. That means I've told the software, I want this footage to say zoomed out from the beginning up to this point. Now, because I've already added the first keyframe, adding the rest becomes a lot easier. I'm gonna move that playhead forward a few frames and I'm going to zoom in on that car. Now, the easiest way to do that is to go to the upper right, left click on the zoom X or zoom Y if they're linked, left click and drag it to the right and it's gonna zoom in. Now, as you can see, it didn't zoom in on the car, it zoomed in in the courtyard of those buildings. Now I'm gonna need to move the footage and go over to where the car is. Now, the way I like to do that is to go down and turn that transform option on just below the preview window. Make sure transform is selected, click that and turn it on. Now you'll see there's a big white dot in the center of my footage now. But if I zoom out, you can actually see it's created a box around the entire frame of that video. The reason the frame is way out here is because I've already zoomed in. If I hadn't zoomed in that much, you'd see it originally started full frame. And what I can do is if I scroll in on this screen so I can see it better, I can left click in the screen and hold and drag that whole footage over to find that car. And there it is right there. And I'm gonna put it right on that center dot. By the way, I'm using the center scroll wheel of my mouse to zoom in and zoom out on the entire size of that preview window. If you're on a laptop, you may know the two fingered trick to do that. But also above the preview window here, you have options for changing the amount of zoom. You can, just by clicking a different percentage and setting the zoom that might work for you. Now, the minute I move that over and drag that car into the center, now down just below our footage, you'll see that DaVinci Resolve has added another keyframe. And what it's told DaVinci Resolve is I want you to stay zoomed out all the way to the first keyframe, but then between the first and second, zoom in. Now, if I wanted to control the speed of that zoom at all, all I'd have to do is move the keyframes closer together. A little closer to make it faster, pull it out to make it slower. It's a little bit slow right there, so I'm gonna left click and grab that keyframe and just slide it over. And now that zoom will be a little faster. And once you have it where you want it, let's make sure that that car is still in the center of the frame. I'm using that dot as reference from the transform option. I wanna make sure that the car stays centered in my footage. So I'm gonna play forward here a little bit, and as you can see, that car starts to move off to the right. But the cool thing about having that transform window still enabled, all I have to do is click on that screen, left click and hold, and drag that car back to the center so that dot is centered just about the middle of the roof of the car. And as you can see, DaVinci Resolve fills in the blanks and it'll continue to follow from one keyframe to the next. Now as the footage moves forward, you can see the car once again moves out of frame. So I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna drag it back. 
Now, if I go back over to that section where it zoomed in and actually slowly scrub through, can you see how that zoom is a little choppy? I want to add a little bit of blur to that zoom as if you're getting sucked right into that car and your eyes are sort of a little out of focus as the zoom happens and then refocus when it's actually got the car centered right in frame. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go over to the toolbox on the left and I'm going to click on the effects tab and I'm going to grab an adjustment clip and bring that over into a track above my main footage. Now, for those of you who don't know what an adjustment clip is, it's basically an empty box that you can put into your project and anything you do to the adjustment clip will affect all the tracks below it. I know that sounds a little bit weird, but watch what happens here. Now, I don't need the adjustment clip to do anything else but affect that section where I zoom in. So let me shorten it by left clicking, holding and dragging that over. So it's about the same length as that zoom. And I'm going to go back over to the toolbox on the left again. But this time I'm going to go over to open effects and I'm going to use the search bar to find a zoom blur. I'm going to grab that zoom blur, bring it over and drop it right inside of that adjustment clip. And if you see as I scrub past, can you see that bit of blur that's now added to the zoom? It's not so choppy, it's a little more blurred out and feels a little more realistic. You can select that clip, go to the upper right inspector and click on the effects portion of it. Now you can dial in that zoom blur even more to your liking. You could add a little more blur to it. You can decide what the center position is. You see, you can sort of move that and it changes the focus, but you can open the advanced controls and do things like change it from better to enhanced and even improve the look of that effect. Now when I play through, watch what happens. See how that blur really takes that zoom to the next level? Now we want to do another thing. We want to create that feeling like they've got a radar or a target on the car from a helicopter up above. So I found this PNG image of these crosshairs that looks like a targeting device. It looks like it has a black background, but it's actually transparent. So when I grab that and bring it down into my footage, I'll bring it right down after the zoom happens. And I've got it centered right over that car, but it's a little bit big. Because I still have the transform option on, what I can do is grab the corner and shrink that down a bit by left clicking and holding. And now I want that to follow the car. Now the car is pretty much centered in the frame, but let's make sure this targeting image stays right on the top of that car. With the playhead at the beginning of that footage, I'm gonna start by adding a keyframe right there. Now I'm gonna move forward a bit and see what happens. Can you see how that white dot now has moved a little off center from the top of the car? Let's just grab that by left clicking, holding and dragging it back over the middle of the roof. And if you look at your footage, because you added that first keyframe, Resolve will automatically add that second one. So now it feels like it's tracking from there to here. But let's move forward a little bit more and see if it stays on it. Pretty much does. Let's move forward a little bit more. It's starting to fall off. Let me move that back on the center of the roof of the car. So now you'll see it zooms in on the car, the target appears, and it really feels like the target is keeping that car in the crosshairs. So now I've got these images kind of working together, but what I don't have is any audio effects going on. And I really want to sell the idea of a helicopter being there, but there's no helicopter in the shot. So the way I would do that is I can actually find the sound of a helicopter and put it into the background. Doing all of the things that I'm creating here today would not be possible if it weren't for today's sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks offers unlimited downloads of diverse and high quality media for one predictable subscription cost. So you can say goodbye to that expensive paperclip pricing that you might see from some other companies. But the great thing is that Storyblocks doesn't just offer you millions of 4K and UHD footage to use in your projects. They also offer music and sound effects and images, and they even have video templates for some of your favorite video editing software, including DaVinci Resolve. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head over to Storyblocks by clicking the link I'll put down below. Thankfully, I was able to find this sound effect as well from Storyblocks. I'll shrink that down so it's the same length as everything else in the project. And you can see just by having that helicopter sound in there, starts to make it feel like there's an actual helicopter in this shot. But there's still more that we can do with this to take it to the next level. The footage is in the city, so I really want the sounds of the city to be in there as well. I was able to find another audio effect that was a city recorded from a rooftop. The volume is a little bit low on this, it seems. There's a couple ways you can bring the volume up. Now you can select that clip in your timeline and actually go to the upper right volume and pull up that slider. You can also click right in the track and you'll see that the mouse changes left click and you can drag that line upwards and it does the exact same thing. We're bringing the volume up from the clip itself, but if you look up top here in the upper right, you can see the volume has been brought up. Now these two tracks together start to really create the sounds of the city and the helicopter happening at the same time. But there's another layer that I want to add in here to create a cool effect. 
right here with that zoom, I want to add an audio effect to really accentuate that zooming in motion. So let me add one more track in here. I'm gonna right click, choose add track. I think this can be a mono effect. Now I was able to find this whooshing sound effect from Storyblocks. And if you can hear, it's sort of a double whoosh sound. What I wanna do is I actually only wanna have that second half of that whoosh, but it happens very quickly. What I wanna do is I wanna stretch that out. So in order to stretch that out, what I'm gonna do is select it here in the timeline, and I'm gonna go up to speed change. I'm gonna grab that speed wheel, left click hold and roll it back. And I'm gonna place that right underneath that zoom in section. It's kind of cool, right? I'll play with it a little bit more and get that dialed in. But one thing I really feel like I'm missing right now is that police chatter, you know, when they're on their radios talking to each other. Once again, Storyblocks came through and has those sound effects in their library. So I grabbed some of those and brought them down into the timeline. Putting all these layers together in my project ended up giving me this. If you want to learn more about how to edit videos with DaVinci Resolve and grow your YouTube channel, click on the videos that I have on screen now or the ones that I'll link down below. Peace.